okay. So here's the deal. I'm at Home Depot. They have a lot of pretty plants. <laughs> I don't know, a vlog for tomorrow. So just look at the plants. These are adorable, but also stupid. Talk about that when we get home. Oh, it's a succulents. The succulents are looking nice too. Good, healthy, full plants. This is fun, and I used to know the name of it, but it escapes me. Someone comment down below. Do you know what they're called? Oh, I bet these were really pretty, but they're almost all bloomed out. Except for this one, it still has a lot of buds in it. Look at all those. That's a very pretty Dyfenbachia. I mean, it's just like the same kind you always see, but maybe since I don't see them as often as I used to, I'm just liking it more. That's because it's shiny. The leaves are shiny. That's what it is. Oh, lovely begonias. Nice big leaves. So pretty. Oh, that's a good looking cat palm. The trunk on that one. Looks good. Healthy plant. I'm tempted, but I really don't need it. But it just, it looks so nice. Oh, $60? Heck no. <laughs> They're Christmas critters. With their little assorted succulents. Those are cute. Okay, that's enough. We've seen the plants. Look pretty good. Maybe I got a few. I don't know. We'll see you in a minute. Hey, doggies. Did you miss me? The answer is yes, you're supposed to say yes. Toby? Nothing? Hello, Toby? Hello? Okay, we well, has got a tail wag. <laughs> What's up, garden friends? Jeff here, hope everybody's doing well. I'm great. I did, probably should have done that intro like a minute ago. Oops. It has been a very busy week, so I haven't gotten much done. Oh my goodness. I thought I would try to start the video or do the indoor portion with the tripod, but that's not working with this little monster running around. He's constantly knocking into it. As I was saying, things have been very busy this week, but not with like plant stuff. I've been gutting a bedroom up. You stop that. Uh-uh, no. Go ahead and lie down. Good boy. Yeah, just simmer for a moment. That's nice, just a little simmer. As soon as I picked up the camera, he got the zoomies. Hi, pumpkin. I love you so much. So I've been gutting the bedroom upstairs, just going through old things and purge time and a lot of laundry. I realized after I did the first load or second load of laundry in the new washer and dryer that I don't think my old washer and dryer was really getting stuff that clean, which is really gross. I had no idea that that was the case, but I uh, just wanted to sleep on fresh sheets. Got the new washer and dryer, so I washed my sheets, which I had just washed the day before. I know, did I say watched? Washed. Uh, but, but stop it. Get out of the tree. Like I said, yes, I know. Wasteful, but I just wanted to sleep on fresh sheets. It had been such a long time since I've been able to use fabric softener. Anyways, did that, pulled them out of the dryer, and the amount of lint in the lint trap, like, it was disgusting. And they had just been washed the day before. And I took a shower before I went to bed, so, like, I, there's no way that amount of lint could have come off of any human or animal in a single night anyway. So I realized, oh, yeah, for the past, like, few years, my washer and dryer, I've, I've just been, like, walking around in dusty filth this whole time. No, not really. Like the stuff always came up smelling nice and everything, but it was more the hair, like the cat hair and stuff that was getting out. Long explanation for I've been like rewashing pretty much all my linens, comforters and those things, which has been nice. Haven't been as congested. So I think that 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 probably has something to do with it. Well, I'd like to thank the washer and dryer for that, but really it's probably more the time of year. Pumpkin, always put your pumpkin on camera, pumpkin. So not much has happened plant-wise and it has been so cold. Like I, we got down to 20 one night and then another night, 19 degrees and the highs have been in the lows. Like I just, I have not been out there in doing much of anything. I did go out and do some watering on the couple of days when it was like in the 40s and 50s because the air is pretty dry and it hadn't rained at all. You're not supposed to take fluffies outside, Turbo. You're also not supposed to go outside without permission. He has been a dream all week. And then I pick up the camera and you go crazy. I learned while editing last week's video and seeing him running around in the background and just like being all over the garden, which I just wasn't noticing because I was paying attention to the camera and not him. 
So that's bad. I need to fix that and not do that. Because he's learned that he can get away with everything when I have the camera in my hands. Turbo, come here, baby. Come on, and don't... Yeah, see, that's why we don't take fuzzy toys outside. Because you leave them, and then they get nasty. You don't need your toys to get nasty. There you go. That's what's been going on. Gross space heater, that still hasn't happened yet. There's a miscommunication with scheduling, so... It's rather frigid out there, too. I have some plan updates that I'll be talking about in another video here. Done a little bit of decorating. I got this star at Home Depot it, because it said it did a light show, which it does, and the light show is beautiful, but the star itself, I think it's a bit much. It probably wouldn't be as extreme if I were to have mounted this on the other side. I just, for some reason, was thinking I could cover it up. I don't know why I thought that. This is a very cheap tree. It's not very full. But it's more just that the star itself is so bright that it actually makes the rest of the tree look very dull and dim. It doesn't matter. It's just a for funsies tree. I guess that's what they all are, aren't they? Some amaryllis starting to bloom here. This one, I should have looked at this before I started. This one says amaryllis Denver. It's just a white amaryllis, just a white amaryllis, but the petals have a really nice texture to them with all these little ripples and folds to them in that light green middle. I think that's a really pretty one. I do have the Dracaena here. We'll talk about that in a minute. But first, I, um, I grabbed some poinsettias. Poinsettia, poinsettia. Say it however you want. Makes no difference to me. For this area over here. <laughs> it looks great right now, doesn't it? This bar area in front of the fish tanks. This is where I actually do like a lot of my editing and just like morning computer things and whatnot. It has become a bit of a gathering ground for other things, mostly just candles, which I don't even burn candles over here. It's not a great idea to burn scented candles that close to the fish tank. But the spot where I usually keep these has been covered in Christmas things. So <laughs> I want to tidy this up and I want, oh, okay. Everywhere I go, there's a dog or a cat behind me. <laughs> it just fell right on my butt. I got the poinsettias and I would like to just make this area poinsettia E while still leaving the middle open so that you can sit there and watch the fish and do that. You get it. I'm gonna clean this up and throw some flowers in it. So as per usual, my eyes are bigger than, well, this time not bigger than my pot, but just bigger than my spot. That's okay though. Still looks nice. Very festive. Don't worry, the candles are fake. I feel like I probably didn't need to say that, but I'm sure there's somebody out there who is having a gut reaction of get the candles away from the plants. But th it's okay, they're not real. I always love the poinsettias during the holidays. So fun, so pretty. The nurseries did not get these in until very late. It's like November 26th or something like that. I was just able to find them, like they had just come in. But that's okay, so there's a lot here. They're just assorted poinsettias, don't have names for them. There is one extra back here in the corner that I just set there. Originally, I had this, I don't really think that any of this warrants much explanation, but I'm doing it anyways. I originally had this one right here, so it would mirror this other larger one. They're two different sizes, but that one's just slightly small. I wanted the red and the white on both sides, and then I changed my mind and decided I didn't want symmetry, and that one that's back there, right up by the fish tank glass, is really girthy, like super big and round, takes up a big amount of space and it just it wasn't working right here it was sticking out too far so i'm going to probably move that to my garden window next week when i set up like all the gingerbread stuff and do that decorating and have that in there i think that would be nice to actually have in there i want some white in that window because i have all those fairy lights or string lights whatever you want to call them in the curtains and that white will reflect that nicely this entire spot is actually very dark the camera might be making it seem brighter than it is you would think the fish tank would really light things up but the lights are set up for the coral so they're actually not as bright as you would think i just wanted some white mixed in over here because same thing like i was mentioning with that kitchen windows that it will help to reflect some light and brighten the area up stop chewing on the tripod you better stop it. I'll be moving that one because that really does block the view of the fish tank. From the looking through the lens, it really does look like the view of the tank is blocked an awful lot, but here in person, it's not much, with the exception being that one that's back there by the glass. I'll go ahead and move that so you can see what it looks like when it's nice and opened. Before and after, so much better, right? Yeah, maybe not, I don't know. I like it, it's warm and it's cozy. I love the way the candles reflect up in there. That'll look even better at nighttime. Like I mentioned, this spot's really dark. I put some Govee string lights 
up in the ceiling last week, and I cannot believe what a difference that has made as far as making it easier to see when I'm over here. I wouldn't think that that would matter that much, but all the aquarium maintenance happens in here, and it is dark. Like, really dark. Man, the lens. It is not that bright in person. This is a lie. It is much darker over here. Much, much, much darker. Even with the new lights. So I'm happy to have done that. That's going to look nice for a few more weeks. And pardon the sloppy cord management. I just tossed those lights up there because I was really anxious to play with them and see how they work. I actually, I think I'm going to have to pull the trim back from up there to get that cord inside to conceal it. And I'd, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> but I don't think it's that complicated. I can figure it out. I was hoping that popping this bright pink one down low would help kind of balance things out as far as having the pink over here and no other pink up high on the other side. And then I decided that I don't care. I was trying to get symmetry and then I was like, I, actually, I don't think I want to be symmetrical. I just want fun poinsettia color. Here we are. That's done. Looks great. A nice cozy space to enjoy the morning drinks and the, you know, all the work and those things. Morning routines. I don't know if y'all have ever seen this area before. Isn't the bar pretty? It's all carved out with sea life. It's not a lot of fun to like put your hands on it. It feels horrible, but it's looks really cool. Got the octopus in the top. It is not fun to clean though. There's some sand that got in there. Like maybe, a, I don't know, two or three weeks ago, I had to add sand to the tank, which isn't something you would normally have to do, but uh, the sand layer does start to wear out after so many gravel bags over a decade. So I had to put some in there. There's spilled sand in the cracks and I'm gonna have to get some of that like canned air, I think, to squirt that out. Okay, now for the Dracaena. We talked about at the beginning of the video and why this plant is cute, but also stupid and doesn't make any sense. I did pick one of these up a few weeks ago when I was at Home Depot. That's why I revisited when I saw them pointing out that they're dumb. The thing is though, this is really cute, isn't it? The little stick with the zigzags and all this beautiful foliage coming out. I specifically grabbed this one just because I really liked the variation on it. Thought it was really pretty, but there is a problem with this. This tiny little stick here, that's not gonna do much for these trunks as these grow. When we see the Dracaenas at the nurseries where it's a stick with the growth coming out the sides, like you see right here, growers can buy the sticks in bulk. You can get them in like packs of hundreds and thousands and you get them in different sizes. You just get a big bundle of just this part, just the trunks where they've been cut into different segments. You stick them into some soil, they branch out the sides. Pretty simple, very easy to propagate that way and mass produce and get them out into the market, especially at the big box stores. Nothing unusual there. That's something we see all the time, right? With the Dracaena fragrance, the corn plant, you see it sometimes with the Daramensis type, which are the Janet Craigs and the Marginatas, where it's just basically a thick trunk, thick-ish with lots of little shoots coming off the side. Nothing wrong with that, when they're larger plants, that is. That stick that's in there on all the different ones, that's done growing. You're not gonna get any more growth out of this portion right here, not vertically anyways. Might get some thickening up potentially, but height-wise, nothing's gonna happen there. All of the growth is going to be from those offshoots. These cute little offshoots that are coming off the trunk, those are just going to keep going up and 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 up. You get, you see where I'm going here? Any idea? Yeah, there's not going to be enough stick down here to support all of that someday. So we're gonna end up with a little, what, five inch chunk of stem right there with like three to four foot tall offshoots coming off the sides. That, that's not going to work. Over time, that's going to be problematic as these pieces grow. So this is a plant where when I see it at a nursery or at those big box stores, I tend to feel like it's been sold just as a, something for people to buy as a gift or really a throwaway plant where it's like, okay, I'm gonna have a plant sitting on my desk for a while, somewhere in my bedroom. And then eventually they're just like, it's gonna die anyway, so it doesn't matter. Not the best mentality to have with plants. However, I mean, look at all these poinsettias. Not that different, right? Those are sold with the exact same mentality. When's the last time anybody bought a poinsettia? The tag had instructions on how to keep them alive when they're done flowering right? No. People just assume that you're going to throw them away. Keep them around, have them for the holidays, and then those colors will start to fizzle out and fade, or people won't be able to give them as much light as they need as those flowers start to fizzle out, and then they get tossed. With the poinsettias that I have here, I mean, I'm, I will try and keep them, but it doesn't always work out. They're not a hard plant to keep alive past their flowering. They're really not, especially if you can get them outdoors during the summertime. Getting them to go back into bloom 
or to put off their colorful leaves, I should say, well, that is, their blooms are held inside of there. Not super complicated, you just have to have the timing right for all of that with the poinsettias. But it's always worth trying. So I will be holding on to those and probably just toss them in the garden with my other plants during the summertime and then seeing if they go back into flower. If they don't, I tried. We try our best. With something like this, how I'm going to approach taking care of this plant is as these offshoots start to get too large for this tiny little piece of stick down here. I could probably do this with the size that these are at right now, these offshoots, but I would like for them to put on probably another couple inches of growth. You can just take a knife, go in there and chop those right off that stick and then go ahead and remove some of those lower leaflets and stick them back down into some soil. And those will take off and start growing. The squeaky noises in the background, that's the dog. You probably already knew that, but I just thought I should let you know. It's a simple process, easy to do, and then this will just keep pushing out more growth. And as it keeps pushing those out when they get too big, cut them off and <laughs> you just get more plants from it. So essentially this little Dracaena stick here is just basically gonna be a propagation <laughs> factory for getting more of these to come out. And I'm okay with that because it's cute. It looks nice, easy plant to have and tuck around with other things. Okay, I mean, that doesn't really look all that great, but you get what I'm saying. An adorable little plant, but I don't feel like these were made to be sold to people to have for a very long time, unfortunately. It's something I always feel when something is sold in a can that has absolutely no holes in the bottom. Come on now. Would not be difficult at all to write down on these tags to so go ahead and pull the plant out, water it, and when the water stops dripping, go ahead and set it back into the cash pot. I don't know why nobody does that. Also, I'm not trying to come down on anybody. If you buy a plant and you know that maybe you won't have it for that long, you just wanted something with some color, it's sometimes you roll the dice, right? I get plants all the time and then I'll have them for a few years and go, you know what, it's not doing anything for me anymore and I'll give it away or get rid of it. So many different plants, right? We always want to try new ones, so that's that's all this is. I mean, it's not a new plant, it's a Dracaena, but it's, it's just, it's so silly looking. Something new to look at, like with the poinsettias, Something new to look at, something to brighten the space and add some color. Now, poinsettias, I know I mentioned the spot, fairly dark. When they're in bloom, I've never had issues when it comes to lighting for the plants. Turbo's plastic bottle, he loves this thing. When they're flushed out with all those colorful leaves, I've never had an issue with the lighting with them. It's always a good idea to be very aware of what kind of water they're getting, not to overwater them if they're not getting very much light. You don't want to overwater them, period. Especially since they're usually in like a foil wrap around the pot. So you either got to pop holes in the bottom of that or just be very cautious about how you water the plants. Over here in this spot, I think they'll be okay. Some light does come through that window, but I try and avoid it because that can create algae problems on the fish tank. So I'll keep an eye on them. And if like they're suffering in a few weeks, it would probably be about a month until I would see any signs of stress on these. At that point, I can just move them into my garden window. There's a lot more sun over there. And then in a couple months, they'll be out in the growth space under those fun lights. Then a location like this where they'll get some light, mostly there's a door over here, they'll get some light through there. And then everything else is just going to be ambient lighting, which isn't the best for plants that like bright light. Oh, they're in this phase i'll make sure to just water them when they've dried out almost all the way feel the heft of the pot see how dry they are they'll probably get watered every i don't know seven to ten days maybe it's just gonna depend on how dry the air is and whatnot there are a few fans in the area so the air does move an awful lot over here that's partially because you have to keep fresh air moving around that fish tank that's a whole different explanation has to do with the pH of the water and this being an enclosed system but anyways that may dry the pots out faster some of the candles are a little bit dim they need new batteries, right? Most of them have rechargeable batteries in them, and you know those they tend to not last too long, so you have to recharge them like every week or so. I just wanted to turn them on so you get a general idea of the space. I like it. So much color. The point that is, you know, I don't keep many of them that often. It's been a long time since I've had this many because of well, the pets, right? We know that they're toxic, and you know, there are people who like shove these things in their mouth and they're like, oh, it's not toxic. It, it, it is. It's a euphorbia. Sure, maybe it's not going to kill you, but that doesn't mean you should eat it. It doesn't mean your pet should eat it either. <laughs> and my general philosophy is that if it's not grown intentionally for consumption, to keep it away from curious mouths. So this is a very nice secluded area. The cats can't get up here. I will make sure to watch for falling leaves. Oh, my light died. <laughs> That's fine, it still looks nice. Uh, if the dogs or cats, if they get a fall on a leaf, it's not gonna be the end of the world. They should be just fine, but it's best to avoid that. That's just my policy with basically all of my plants. Because even the ones that are edible, consumable, uh, they still tend to barf those up. 
Unless, like I said, it's something grown specifically for them. This makes me happy because I can have the poinsettias. They can look nice and they're away from where I have to worry about the animals getting near them. So colorful. I'm going to do some tweaking. I did just kind of toss this all together for the video. Not going to lie. Like, I will probably embellish with, like, some silver bells or something that's reflective. And I want to change this pot. This cash pot that this is in. I'm not really crazy about it. I have some somewhere with my holiday things. I don't know where they are, but they're kind of like brown and ginger ready. If you've watched my videos for a few years, you've seen them. At some point during the holidays, a plant ends up in them. They're like a coppery tone. I think that would look better there. Okay, that doesn't matter. I need to get this back in the kitchen because this, this definitely will need more light. And again, I'm not saying that poinsettias don't need bright light, but they generally are just fine for a few weeks when they're in bloom and flushed out like this under lower light. Yeah, they'll be okay. As long as they aren't overwatered, they'll be just fine. Oh, look how they're reflecting the lights. That's perfect. That's what I wanted. And I set the lights above me to change colors very slowly. There it goes. Oh, that's so nice. Let's set this back down over here. See what this is the window with all the lights in it. I think that'll look nice in the evening time. Those pretty lights back there. I'm going to tuck this back there further. I haven't gotten around to doing this window. I'll get that done in a few days, but that's going to be very pretty as long as it fits. It may not fit and I might have to put it somewhere else and that's okay. Or I might give it away to someone. <laughs> All right, that's gonna do it. Toby's having a dream. Having a nice dream. He's so sweet. I love him so much. Oh, and I picked this up at Home Depot too. Just because, I mean, why not? It's so classy. Had to have it. It lights up. You push this button back here and the little lights come on. Wait, there we go. See, he has little, little lights on him. Isn't that sweet? Kind of freaks me out at nighttime because when it's dark in here, it's just, it's like there's this outline of a dog in the corner. So that's been fun. I got him the same night I started watching Narcos. So I've been calling him Pablo Escobar. Oh, he's part of the last minute nature of this video. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. Comment down below, say hi. I love talking to everybody. Hope things are going well. I know a holiday just passed for everybody here in the U.S. and for those of you not in the U.S., I hope that y'all have just been having a great time. New holidays coming up for other people as well. I think Hanukkah starts tomorrow, doesn't it? Happy early Hanukkah to those of you. Or whenever you're watching this, happy prior. I need to go. I'm starting to ramble. All right. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.